Hi, it's Marissa from BubbleBeeApothecary.com. Today I'd like to do a fermentation lid review. I'm going to go over a bunch of different styles of fermentation lids and talk about my experience with them. I just want to say that this is not a sponsored video at all in any way. I bought all of these different fermentation lids with my own money and have been trying them and using them so I'm ready to give you my comparison of how they work. So first off, what even is a fermentation lid? It is a lid that has been specially designed to go on the top of a jar when you're making fermented food. There's different designs from absolutely basic canning jar lids or different fancy versions of lids that are specifically designed when you're fermenting. So when you're making fermented foods, there's gases that are produced as the bacteria are active and you oftentimes want some way for those gases to be released. I'm gonna talk about, there's different schools of thought on that in a little bit when I talk about some of the different lid options, but a lot of times people do want to allow that to happen. So the main thing that all these different lids do is they allow the gases to escape without letting outside air into the ferment. So some of the benefits of using these different fermentation lids are that they can really help reduce the risk of things molding or different strains of yeast that you don't want developing in there. So I'm going to go through these different types of lids and talk about what I liked about them, kind of the pros and cons, the price ranges, and all that kind of thing. Hopefully this is helpful for you if you're thinking about buying some fermentation lids. This will hopefully help you choose the ones that will work best for you. The first lids that I want to talk about are just basic canning jar lids. So first of all, we have just the basic ring with the flat canning jar lid and the plastic canning jar lid. That's one of the things that I love about making homemade fermented foods is that you actually don't even really have to go out and buy any fancy fermentation equipment at all. You can do very well with these lids. Between the two of these type of lids for fermenting, my favorite is the regular ring and flat canning jar lid. And that is because I learned fermentation from Monica Corrado. She's the GAPS diet chef and also a certified GAPS practitioner. And she taught this really easy method using glass jars and these tight metal lids. So you fill your jar with your ferment, all your ingredients that you're going to use. You make sure everything's submerged. And then you put this metal lid nice and tightly onto the jar. And then you'll notice that when it's on the jar, you'll be able to click the lid up and down. So you put this lid nice and tightly on the jar screw it nice and tightly, and then you'll be able to click the lid up and down. When the lid is tight enough that you cannot click it up and down anymore, then you know that your ferment is done. So I really like that for just being simple, very inexpensive, because you just use the lid that already came with the jar that you bought, and very easy to tell when it's done. I have also fermented with the plastic mason jar lids, and those ones are not quite as nice as the metal ones just because they don't have that feature where you can pop it up and down and know when it's done, but they do work. So if that's all that you have, you can definitely do it that way. I do like to switch to these type of lids once I'm keeping my ferments in the refrigerator just because I like that they're a little bit easier to keep clean. The metal ones tend to kind of start to rust and just get sediment and discoloration on them and these are easier to keep clean when you have a jar of ferments in your refrigerator. A little easier to use because it's just one piece rather than two that you're dealing with. So those are the absolute basic, you know, very accessible choices for fermentation lids. Now let's talk about some of these fancier ones. So this one right here is a waterless fermentation lid and I got these on Amazon. All three of these designs I got on Amazon and I'll have links below to all of them if you decide that you wanna try one or more of them out. But it's basically just a little silicone disc that fits inside of a metal canning ring. And the nice thing about this is that it's very simple and easy to use. It has a little hole in the top of the lid that allows the gases to escape and then no air can come in. Very basic, simple, easy to use and works really well. Probably my favorite 
part about these is the price. You can get six of them for $16.99, so of all these, they are the most affordable option. They're also, you know, really easy. There's just one piece to keep track of and to clean and everything. So I was happy with those. There's not really a con, like a downside to them that I can think of. I guess the only thing is just that they are so basic and they don't have some of the features that the other ones do, but that didn't really end up being a problem for me. So if you wanted something basic and, and really simple that works well, these are a good way to go. The next one are these airlock fermentation lids and this is obviously a little bit more of a complicated design. It has a plastic lid with a hole in it. There's also a silicone seal inside here and then you have this little part on the top that you put water into and then a little free floating part. So the idea is that as gases are escaping out of your ferment they release into the water, the bubbles can rise to the top and pop and then no air at all can come inside. So it's more of a like secure seal compared to the silicone one, I guess. And if you were really having trouble with molds and different things happening, this would probably be the way to go. It seems like the surest, like the most, you know, secure seal against outside air of all of them. So that's probably the, the positive, the, the pro for this one is just how very secure it is. Like there's nothing getting in there. The con would be that there are multiple parts to keep track of and to wash. It also takes up more room on your counter space. You have to be careful to not knock the top of it off when you're working in your kitchen. You know, it's a little taller, a little more precarious. You can get four of these for $12.99, so not tremendously expensive. Um, you know, fairly similar in price. You know, not too different from the silicone ones. So they're, you know, a good affordable option if you wanted to choose something like that. But yeah, I think those would be good for if you're having trouble with your ferments and you just wanted to be really, really sure that you were not letting any outside air in. Now, I'll probably get comments about this, but I know that when I lifted this off, then outside air could get in. This is already a finished ferment and I'm not worried about that at all. It's going back into the refrigerator once I'm done with this video, so just a little explanation there. The next one that I'd like to talk about is this lid right here. This is from Nourished Essentials. And it's very similar in design to, it's like a combination of these other two. So it has a regular plastic part with a seal, and then it has a silicone part in the middle with a hole in it that lets gases escape. A neat feature about this one is that it has a little marker that you can mark the date on the top. So if you want to mark what day the ferment is supposed to be ready, you can do that. Um, I guess one downside with that is that it doesn't really take into consideration air like room temperature because that definitely affects how quickly ferments are ready if you're using this metal canning jar method then you know when they're ready no matter how much time it took for example depending on the temperature in the house a ferment could be ready in three days it would take three days for the lid to be tight enough to not click up and down or if it's really warm like this time of year it could be ready in one day and this doesn't really take that into account but that's okay, I mean, you can always just kind of gauge it. You can open it up and taste it and see how it is. You'll be letting in outside air, but you know, that's okay. It also has this nice little tab on it that you can easily open the lid with, which is I thought was really handy. So there are some nice things about that one. The con for this one, I would say, is probably the price. It's the most expensive of all these fermentation lids. You get three of them for $25.99, so definitely the most expensive of any of these choices. But if something like a date thing to keep track of the date is really important to you and you really like the feature of being able to loosen the lid with a little handle thing here, then it's probably a good choice. So that's my comparison for all of these different fermentation lids that I tried. If you have used any fermentation lids, I'd love to hear what your experience has been. Go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know which ones you've tried and which ones are your favorite. If you have any questions about anything, then definitely leave me a comment and I'll be sure to answer that. I also have lots of other fermentation videos on my channel. I show you how to make zucchini relish and pickles and sauerkraut and some other things. I'll have some of them linked below, so definitely check those out. And like I said before, I will have links to these different lids in the description box below, so if you wanna try any of them out, you'll be able to find them easily down there. I'll also have a link below to my blog post, which will be a full written version of this whole review if you'd rather have that. Also over on my blog, I have a free 
member exclusive password protected subscriber library. It's where all my free ebooks and checklists and printables, labels, different things like that are all in one spot. So if you're interested in getting access to that, there'll be a link below. Okay, I hope that you found that really helpful, just seeing a comparison of these different lids based on my experience. If you like this video and found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody else who you think might find it helpful. Here on my channel, I show you how to make nourishing recipes for nutrient-dense food, natural remedies, and DIY skincare and home products. So if those are something that you're interested in and you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two videos every week. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.